Yo, I'm Matthew Kingpin. If you're here from my Dying Light video or from back when I posted about Counter-Strike, allow me to go a bit off the wall with this next upload and talk about something a little spicy. Not Something Spicy is about a lovely little indie game that starts off with telling quirky quips about brazenly vulgar, golden-haired political figures, <clears throat> fictional ones, and eventually ends as a social commentary on the destructive and dire effects of even subtle spins on what gets to be known as the truth. This piece of media, of course, being the ingenious FMV game Not For Broadcast, fully released around a couple years ago as of this video's production. Specifically though, I want to focus on a singular aspect of the game that really stands out to me. The not-so-subtle moral choice mechanic and the contrastingly quite subtle meta-commentary that morality system entails by its inclusion. The process by how individuals whom could be described as nothing less than ordinary, everyday citizens can be driven to committing acts of absolute abhorrence and making completely self-centered choices. So if you don't know about this lovely little piece of alternative media, Not For Broadcast is a game about being a news editor, British humor, and skit comedy all at once. You're also gonna have to tangle with the moral complexity of attempting to be fair and politically uncompromised in a world where no one is completely right, everyone has some kind of ulterior motive, and there are powers far greater than yourself willing to go to almost any length to coerce you into furthering those motives. Yeah, it's a bit of a thematic roller coaster, as you might imagine. It's a game that's packed with goofy, goober, monkey brain moments, followed up by unflinchingly dark and serious segments. Oftentimes, just handfuls of seconds apart from one another. Not For Broadcast is more than happy to blindside you with a 2x4 of emotional whiplash and snidely snicker at the thought of the player in any way being made uncomfortable by it. This game has many things to say, and not all of those said things are pleasant to hear as a viewer. From here on, I'll be getting into strict spoiler territory. So if any of what I said sounds interesting to you, by all means, please go and give it a try. Or even just watch some of the broadcasts on YouTube, which are all available for view. If not though, I'll be here to show you just how all of these disparate elements blend together to make the game's moral choice system exceptionally intriguing. The concept of morality overall is a topic that I don't have the time or philosophical background or mental energy to cover in its entirety, but one thing I will say in regards to it is that moral constants, considered to be universally agreeable, are far more disagreed upon than most people will ever know or care to admit. Moral codes are highly individualized, and they're a lot more malleable to change than most will ever be forced to come to grips with. Not For Broadcast deals with morality in a delightfully devilish way, allowing the player to shape the news, and by proxy the opinion of the public in tandem, by swapping out toothless TV-friendly headlines and news stories for more unpalatable and reputationally ruinous hit pieces and smear campaigns, choosing to run state-sponsored propaganda or rebellion-supporting C-SPAN-esque infomercials during the always allotted commercial breaks, or through other various opportunities given to the player, either during the main gameplay loop itself, or through the game's albeit somewhat limited visual novel-styled cutscenes, focusing more on the protagonists themselves, all from the relative comfort of their national nightly news room chair. Random scorching heat waves, invasions of killer stuffed animals, and lethal electrical storms aside. These opportunities to change the narrative, literally in real time, consequently lead to actual changes in the FMV cutscenes that range from certain political figures, celebrities, or persons of interest that appear on the show having more solidly supported praise for the station or more coldly crude condemnation for the network in contrast, to even dictating whether or not certain characters will outright live to see whether or not the Rising Rebellion eventually claims its absolutely anarchic aims. It's a stark enough contrast in content that it easily warrants multiple playthroughs following different paths and sticking with different, well, essentially roles that you want to play in the game world. Choosing to be a big business bendover or a revolutionary rapscallion does actually lead to some pretty substantial changes in how the story plays out. All of this is great enough on its own and more than enough to warrant a playthrough, but the part that really intrigues me about Not For Broadcast's branching narrative 
is how all of these various opportunities to shape the world and have it actually respond to you speak on the actual real life moral code of individuals and how easy it is to break that said moral code when the odds are stacked sky high against you and when the actual choices you as a person are being forced to make aren't just between showing a popular posthumous politician in a cruel compilation of incompetence or the opposite, but whether or not you or those you love are allowed to continue living with any level of comfort, safety, or outright at all depending on your courses of action. It's the age-old moral quandary of, would you steal from a store to stop your family from starving? The conundrum of continuing to choose to do what's right under extreme conditions, that is in essence the underlying true moral system of Not For Broadcast, subtly mixed in amongst the far more surface level choices between rule of law and revolution. In many other videos discussing Not For Broadcast, a surprisingly common, pervasive criticism that gets paraded ceremoniously is the bashing of the visual novel sections of the game, which feature the player character slash protagonist, Mr. slash Mrs. Alex Neutral Gender, and their spouse of suspiciously nondescript nature, whom I fervently enjoy imagining and referring to as a multimeter tall, menacing, malachitic monster, with a stylish haircut, my ideal partner. These sections are accused of being trite, uninteresting, and needless fluff as general criticisms, and most reviewers claim the game would be far better off not including them at all. While I personally also find these sections to be visually unappealing due to the lack of much graphical accompaniment to the dialogue, I emphatically disagree with the assertion that they are needless fluff and could be easily removed without consequence. I would even go so far as to say that Not For Broadcast's moral complexity would lose a surprisingly large amount of bite without their inclusion. Allow me to explain. All the decisions you make as a player affect the world around you, whether that be the public becoming more or less anti-establishment, or powerful people rising to or falling from that power. The visual novel sections, by contrast, show how your decisions affect the world around you, as in the player characters, immediate friends, family, and finances. The personal element of the story provided by the visual novel bits add not only immediate relational stakes to the decisions you make, as the government is quite aware of the existence of your family and their emotional leverage potential against you, but it also contextualizes the consequences you are pushing on everyone else by furthering one side's goals over the other. Your family is part of that public that you're screwing over by aiding the corrupt institution, or by aiding the rebellion in causing never-ending civil unrest and chaos. When push comes to shove, how are you supposed to act in everyone's best interests when there are some decisions that would negatively impact you or those you love just in the interest of making the world a better place? There's not really even an answer to that question, and indeed the game itself doesn't even provide a right or wrong answer other than the absolute truth, which more often than not is carefully obfuscated by the many morally compromised individuals you are in direct contact with willing to twist it. Almost every character or institution wants you to blindly go along with their version of the truth, all the while being very unforthcoming about the benefits they gain from that truth. This even includes the player character, as the revolution is unquestionably a disruptive force that causes civil unrest and through that a significant loss of life and public safety, and the governing power is unquestionably a totalitarian regime more similar to the Third Reich than any of the state-sponsored re-education centers would like you to be aware of. And both sides also offer many potential benefits to you, either monetary in nature or through providing the continued security of you and your loved ones, in exchange for nudging the narrative in their favor over their direct opposition. The game makes it quite easy to fall into accepting a half-truth if that means there comes a substantial personal benefit from doing so. There are seldom few outright happy outcomes or endings no matter which faction is supported, unless you remain entirely unbiased, which, for reasons I stated before, can be quite difficult to do. Eventually, both sides' true colors, dirty laundry, and ulterior motives become fantastically foisted into the spotlight for all to see, unless you outright deny it, of course, and ultimately the damage both sides have caused in many cases cannot be undone. When I feel like no matter what course of action I take in a game that I'm making the wrong choice, that's powerful. When a piece of media can unashamedly provide me with an unsatisfying conclusion and make me appreciate it all the more for it, that's powerful. And when a game tells me to really consider the unfortunate reality of how when people are pushed to the edge and the lives of themselves and those they care for hang in the balance, they might just be brought low enough to committing the same cruelty of their oppressors and I actually feel compelled 
to listen? That is exceptional. Can you as a player seriously choose to sacrifice yourself, your own biases, your own pride, your own relationships just in the pursuit of the truth? I don't know. And I'd never want to be put in a situation where I'd have to find out. That's the actual breaking news that Not For Broadcast wants to bring us, and that makes it exceptionally significant in my eyes. That's about all I have to say for this production. Talking about the inherent moral complexity of humanity is always a dicey subject material, but I hope I was able to deliver my message in as palatable a form as something like this can be presented in. Not For Broadcast is an indie masterpiece. It's a pure expression of individuality and passion that could only be made by the people who created it. And I doubt another game even close to its caliber will ever be made by someone else. It's the definition of a one-of-a-kind hidden gem. So I wanted to show my love for it. That, and it has Jeremy Duddleton, aka Best Boy, so it automatically gets plus 1,000 bonus points in my tism brain. Paul Baverstock is the best part of any scene he's in, 1,000%. Anyways, please give me any and all feedback you have in the comments section. It is all read and appreciated deeply. I'm Matthew Kingpin. Burn your dread, go into the future, and I'll meet you there. And have a peaceful night. It's Crazy Neil's festive Yuletide ornament spectacular! So you've got the best Christmas tree that your money can buy and you want to put on it some crazy ass Christmas ornaments. We want to give you a spectacular Christmas cactus. You know what it's like, you've run out of things to dress up and you want your house to look like a Christmas barn has hit it, then we've got the ornaments for you. You want something like vases or phases or another cactus to go with your first cactus or this, a crazy Christmas barn or a toad, woodpeckers, a cool pineapple, a duck. Christmas elephant, we've got all the seasonal animals. Crazy Neil's Crazy Deals. This is a clear out of the storage locker that second Mrs. Neil abandoned, like she abandoned her children. It's a rainbow of crazy fun. Don't be a prick and get yourself quick. Grab yourself a crazy deal with Neil Appeal.